of technical problems. Our last session, there was a lot of audio leakage, hmm. especially mine, because I had the laptop open and the desktop, and everybody was hmm. guilty. The sound from your headphones is escaping into your microphone. Oh. So we hear the other person talking in an echo. And so maybe I should it, turn down my system sound. Turn it down in your headset yeah. as much as you can. Yeah, okay. Uh, audio leakage. Remember anal leakage? <sighs> God, look, starting with that. <laughs> was that a was that a Buck and Pauline no, thing? Remember Olestra? Oh yeah. When I said to myself audio leakage, that immediately yeah. clicked in. <laughs> so I looked it up. 1997. <laughs> Procter and Gamble launched fat-free <laughs> snack foods, uh, munch on chips fried and calorie-free Olestra. And on the on the package it said, Olestra may cause abdominal cramping and loose stools. But I, I distinctly remember there was a package of something that said possible anal leakage. So uh, Jesus. <laughs> Olean, there was another brand, Olean. So those are all t different takes on oleo, is that the thing? O Olestra o Maybe. It must be. It was, you know, completely fat-free, but it tasted like fried. Mm -hmm. Just shows you really can't have everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, with my IBS, I read a book one time, right? Because it's irritable bowel syndrome. So syndrome implies that there's a lot of aspects to it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of them, God. It's not necessarily in a leakage, but it's pain there. And I remember reading this one case study of this woman who said she was walking up the aisle at church in church and all of a sudden it was so bad it literally like dropped her. Oh god. <laughs> I mean I know it probably really hurt her. <laughs> so freaking funny. <laughs> oh my god. I'm already thinking of thumbnails for this yeah. episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thumbnails, right? For our social media at, at where I work, right. like I always, you know, from time, I don't know, I, from time to time I go in and check, you know, to see if we have any responses, any comments, blah, 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 blah. And don't I pull open one the other day that's just a picture of someone like spreading their butt cheeks, oh, you know, uh, so you can, I'm like, what the, f I wish I could get this person's address and go over there and just smack them. Oh, you should. Like, what's wrong with people? What is wrong with them? Our brains weren't ready for the internet. Oh my God. Listen, I had, uh, I went to a workout on Wednesday, excuse me, on Friday. And uh, we were stretching at the end, and there was one where I, uh, we, had, we had our legs up in the air, and we were just flexing, you know, our toes and stuff. And didn't I squeak out a fart? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Who'd have thought that my legs up in the air and just flexing my feet would cause me to pass gas? Was it hot yoga or anything? No, or... just a regular workout class. <laughs> Thank goodness it was people who were friends of mine. So. Fart yoga. <laughs> yeah, fart yoga. <laughs> Oh my god. I thought my daughter was gonna throw up. She was laughing so hard. Oh she <laughs> did everyone else hear it too? There was only four of us, so it was oh yeah. Oh uh, it was audible. Uh, oh. Very audible. <laughs> oh, we're off to a good start. <laughs> you started it. My sister my sister used to own a moped and um I was at her house once and I wanted to try it out. So she was on one end of the driveway. My cousin was on the other end of the driveway and I was in the middle. I don't know why we were positioned like that. Right. But, and I don't even know if that matters, but anyway, so I tried to get on. Now to this day, I say I was straddling it. She says I wasn't even, you know, it's lost to history, but you know, did the, what is it? Throttle? I don't know. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Gave it gas. Yeah. yeah, and it, it it ran away from me, and I fell back, and my leg <laughs> went up, and I went. <laughs> Were you still on it, or did you fall and off? So, I fell off, so I was okay. on my back. back. With my legs. Nice. <laughs> and so my cousin and my sister, my cousin started giggling, and my sister said, "Shut up! I think she's hurt." And and I was hurt. I had a you know for two weeks, I had a massive black and blue on my side, but I started laughing, and we could not freaking stop laughing. Yeah. I mean, it was just 
classic. <laughs> and that is a family story. You know how you have right. those. And, yeah, right. yeah. Until well, you get a little older. <laughs> Just yeah, be, let's hear one be, of your stories now. We've been revealing, uh, Walt. Yeah, I don't have any real story, but it just gets more and more common. Yeah. <laughs> more of a surprise. Right. I remember visiting my great-grandmother. She was, at the time, she was probably in her late 80s, and she was she was in, she kind of bedridden at home. And my brother and I went to visit, and she was farting the entire time we were talking to her. And, he, you know, we were like... God eight and 12 or something years old and it oh, no. was just pretty hard not to laugh at her poor lady oh god when did your mother-in-law pass bailey that wasn't that long ago either no it was the end of august that recently holy crow i was like i knew it wasn't too far but yeah wow my brother-in-law had the same thing three months apart basically with his parents yeah what are they called broken heart yeah you die of a broken heart yeah yeah yeah, so we're cleaning out their house. and uh, Did you find any classified documents? No, but we did find a couple Sports Illustrated um, swimsuit issues in my father-in-law's desk. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they were relatively recent, you know, within the last couple of years. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you go. <laughs> that must be a nightmare, though, cleaning out someone's house. Of... Yeah, and well, the good news is that they downsized once, so... I mean, it's a lot, but it's still manageable. It's not so crazy. But um, yeah, my sister-in-law found um, a dresser in the guest room. She found all kinds of old christening gowns and oh. babies' uh, like undergarments and stuff. Oh. They found this one pair of pants, like you'd see uh, someone wearing under their your hoop skirt, you know? Yeah, like bloomers, right? Was that what they called Bloomer, them? Bloomers, right, yeah. right. But they, they were like crotchless. What? So it was just legs and the... Waistband, yeah. <laughs> so, do you think they all were like that, or do you think I that was d- some like Fredericks of Hollywood eighteen hundreds? Or maybe that was the wedding night pair you wore, or something. Yeah, we I haven't had time to look it up, but yeah, look that up. That's a yeah, that's okay. a sharp royal <laughs> chats for you. Holy crow! Huh? Interesting. Crutch. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Do you will you yeah. guys have an estate sale or anything like that, or? Yeah, actually, we are, and Mary Miller is going to be our estate sale person because oh. she she runs a business. So oh, that's cool. She came, she came over the oh, other day. Yeah, and it was good to see her. Yeah, how long has she been doing that? She's been doing that, I think, since the early two thousands. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, she oh. bought this uh, established estate sale company and uh, that's cool. Kind of ran with it. Yeah, it was very cool. Hmm. So she was uh, a ton of help just in the initial walk through, and then. We're going to have the real estate guy come in this week and kind of gonna figure out when we're going to put it on the market. And... Where were they living? Uh, in Penfield, Penfield. You know, Panorama Trail. Yeah. They were living in one of the neighborhoods off there, sort yeah. of back, backing up to the quarry. Right. Kind of near where Sue and I, I don't Williams know where they live. Because live, um, I think she got married after I left Rochester. Not that I would have been invited or anything. But... <laughs> when did you leave? Uh, 1999, what years you, I think yeah. it was. How do you even start an estate oh. sale company? What, how do yeah. you begin to do that? Well, you know what? I can, I can actually respond to that. Although maybe you want to talk mm-hmm. about Mary Bailey. I don't know. No, no, no. That's fine. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> I, like my sister, right? With her stuff. I mean, well, she, you know, does antiques, you know, antiques and vintage jewelry is her specialty. But, um, you know, she knows all the estate sale people because she goes to mm-hmm. all of them. And um, a couple of them have said you should start that. You know, you should do that. And um, I think it's, you know, that's maybe how you get into it. Although maybe there's another way. I, you know, I, there's these people that run this big auction house in Buffalo. And I know they do estate sales. And I right. feel like if you're in that area of... Mm. And endeavor sometimes it's a natural yeah. fit maybe real estate or something you can ease over into that that could be a two law are you really li- are you really like garage sales yeah you yeah know? i mean and you just grows grows from there and i think you have to really like i love like my my good friend um his mom had moved to israel and so he asked me to kind of she thought she was coming back you know but he knew that she was never going to come back so he asked me to kind of like close up the house and help him have a sale and stuff. And at the time I was working for myself, so I could, you know, set aside the time to do it. And 
I don't know. I love just organizing stuff and going through stuff and just finding things. You know, I don't know. It's like a treasure hunt. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to enjoy that kind yeah. of stuff, you know. It's probably a whole lot more fun and easier to do it with other people's stuff, too, sometimes. Cause, I'm sure. Because when I look, yeah. when I walk through their house and I look at this stuff and I just get, you know, like, I get agita. Mm. Like, where do you where do you start? Yeah. But I'm sure if it's something when you're doing it for someone yeah. else. Yeah. It's easier to kind of organize it in your brain or categorize it. It'll be interesting to see how she does it. She said, don't throw anything out. She said, you know, keep the paper clips and the, you know, the, the stuff you think would be totally worthless because she said people will come in and buy that shit. Yeah. And that, and that uh, she said, you'll have people who are, who look like they're homeless. And then right behind them is the woman, in the you know, the fur coat from... The east side of town. So she said it's a really mm. range of people that come to these things. Yeah, I mean. Because they're looking, some people are looking for specific items. Yes. And then some are just browsing. Yeah, I mean, whenever, you know, whenever I've had like a yard sale, you, there's always the people right. who come up, but do you have any, you know, Honus Wagner baseball mm. cards? I'm like, right. if I did, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't be living here. <laughs> I don't know. There's something really enjoyable about just looking at stuff. Mm. I, I don't, I just, and I, you know, my whole family, we've mm -hmm. always loved flea markets and garage sales and estate sales and, you know, mm -hmm. auctions. And I don't know what it is. And it, although lately I've really been trying to purge a lot of stuff. Like I have these books that my aunt, my godmother gave me when I was a young child. She'd give me one every year, you know, and I'm like, why am I keeping these if I have grandchildren, they're not going to want to read Black Beauty and Tom Sawyer. You know, I mean, they, like just... No, but you can read them to them. Yeah, That's I don't know if part. I'd even want to read those to them. <laughs> There's yeah. so much more fun stuff to read these days, you know? I, know. I mean, Black Beauty is pretty depressing. Well, if they're first editions, they might be worth something, I don't too. think they are. Yeah. <laughs> They don't look like first editions to me. But there is one that I'm, you know, keeping because I just read it over and over and over. And I even read it recently. It's just this collection of, like, folk stories from around the world. And it's mm -hmm. funny reading it now because there's so many that I recognize from, like, classes that I took. You know, like, oh, yeah, or movies right. that I saw. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is whomever, mm -hmm. you know. That's kind of fun, so. Well, she said a lot of people will buy will buy books just just for decor. Oh, They'll just set up set up a bookshelf, and so it looks like mm. they read. <laughs> I got rid of all my books because I don't didn't want to leave them on my bookshelf anymore. I mean, I have them in my garage. I'm trying to figure out what to do with them. Like those? <laughs> it must be an evolutionary survival thing, right? You never know what you might need, so you keep it in the back of the cave to get mm -hmm. through the next. Mm -hmm. You guys, have you watched Hoarders? Those any of those Hoarder I've shows? Seen clips of it. Yeah, me too. Uh, what's going on there like almost all those people they have some kind of trauma that prompts right. you mm -hmm. know they're hoarding so like there must be some evolutionary purpose right, right? and you know when they go through that right. process it's only a month later that they're right back where they were yeah they go back and visit someone afterwards yeah after they've cleared their house yeah. out i think they have done that i know for example with like bariatric surgery you know 95 oh, yeah percent of the people are fails and so mm -hmm. i maybe with hoarding it's the same sort of statistic i don't mm -hmm. know or maybe it's like that law of thirds you know a third get better a third stay the same a third get worse well it's behavioral so if you have to change your behavior in order to yeah it's weird though i mean i don't know why Luis and i went through a period of like watching a lot of those hoarding shows like <laughs> when he was young and we go away on vacation you know, he was still going to bed relatively early, you know. I mean, if he went to bed after that, he'd, you know, you wouldn't be able to get him to sleep. So, you know, we'd, we'd be hanging out in the evening and we'd go through hoarding shows. I don't even know why, but, I mean, some of these people, just like the bugs, and some people had, like, dead animals in their freezers. Oh. And yeah, like this one woman, I don't even know why. Like, why would you keep <laughs> dead animals in your freezer? Were they animals that she had, like, hunted, or were they animals that... I don't, I don't think she, all of them were hers. I think maybe some of them were, like, roadkill. I don't even remember. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, she wasn't the only one. You know, there are a few people. And then, like, these people, like, they couldn't even use their bathroom because there was no room in their bathroom. Mm -hmm. Or their water wasn't working. Or, you know, like, and they'd have, like, 
three square feet of space mm -hmm. that they could live in. So, so many of those shows are probably, well, I, I'm okay then, I guess. You know, you look at it and you go. <laughs> I guess my idiosyncrasies well, aren't that bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty mild version. Yeah. I was uh, talking with a therapist for a while in my 20s, and he sent me to a group therapy session. And I said to him later, did you send this to, did you send me there? So I know that I'm not like totally wacko because like this one guy was talking about how he used to be a peeping Tom mm -hmm. when he was a teenager, you know, like he would look in people's windows and shit. And <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Or was he telling me that I was like, right. you know, like that I was. Right. Those are your types to hang out with. Yeah. That yeah. was creepy. Very <laughs> creepy. How did therapy work out, Greg? <laughs> What I needed was drugs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I just, the... uh, you know, every podcast I listen to with celebrities, mm -hmm. they're all in therapy. Everybody in Hollywood oh my God. is in therapy. And they're all sober. Right. Right. I mean, it never even occurred to me. You know, I, I figure like I can figure it out myself. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder if these people go forever. Some people go their whole lives. Yeah. Does it help? Does it help? Did it help you? Was well, it... honestly, my stuff was all, I mean, I came to realize later and, you know, my doctor confirmed it. Like I had low level depression for my entire life and, um, well, not my entire right. life, but a lot of it was based in hormones. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, a week before I'd get my period TMI, I'm sorry. I'd have hmm. like, you know, after a certain point in my life, I'd be practically suicidal on that day. You know, it was just after the age of 30, it got so much worse even. Right. And, you know, it took me like four years of my doctor saying, would wow. you like to try medication? I was like, okay, fine. you know, and it changed my freaking life. <laughs> That's what did it. Mm, interesting. Like I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and who she and her husband are really like the sole caretakers for her mother right now. Right. She's literally, you know, over there every single day. They can barely do anything because they've got to be aware of where they are. I mean, like, it's really, really rough. And I would think in a situation like that, talking to someone about it to just vent mm -hmm. would be super helpful. I agree. That would be my guess. Mm -hmm. I had a roommate in college who was had been in therapy probably since she was maybe 11 or 12. I think her parents had split and she'd gone to a therapist and, and she was going to the same person for like 15 years or something. Wow. And that was the kind of therapy where you're wondering, is it because you've just gotten so accustomed to this person that they're more like a friend than a therapist? Or is it a crutch? Is it right. yeah, any, of those, any of those things? Or maybe it's just a, a luxury in a way. Right, yeah. right, that too. Somebody that listens. Yeah. <laughs> Because no one in our yeah. family did. Yeah. I mean, you got to pay him to listen, but... <laughs> With Luis right now, I mean, he's really unclear about what he wants to do, right? And I mean, he's mm. he's in, a, in an age where that's very natural. But I do think he would benefit, not necessarily mm. from therapy, but like career therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, just like, what do you enjoy doing? You know, what are the things that excite you? You know, because I feel like he feels... Like, he should know what he, you know. And I said, well, you know, a lot of people never figure out what they really want to do. But, <clears throat> you know, if you have decisions to make that are sort of based on that, then I think it'd be good for mm -hmm. him to talk to someone about, like, you know, a, co a yeah. career coach or a life coach or something like that. Yeah, you know. Career counselor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're out there. I think it would be valuable because, you know, I can talk to him up to a certain point, but I've got no, too much in the yeah. game, right? You can't be objective. No, you really yeah. can't. I just wondered, you know, I hear, just wonder what goes on with therapy. So you've never done that while you've never felt the need? No. Yeah, I self, you know, self treat. You self treat. With what? While heroin? Chocolate? Sitting in the corner and talking to myself. <laughs> talking to yourself. Oh. <laughs> or listening to the voices that talk to me. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe we should ask Cecilia whether you need therapy. <laughs> she doesn't want to hear it. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I don't even know why. Like, why would you keep dead animals in your freezer?